back for week number seven, Andrew Capone from Who's Got the Action, my partner as always, Caleb Knight from Taking a Stand. Caleb, week seven in the Kentucky Derby, Road to the Derby, we are at 50-point races. We had four races last week. You and I went three for four, so we did pretty well in last week's race. A little chalky, but hey, we'll take it. Um, anything out of those last week's races that you liked? Yeah, just a, uh, a short nose from four for four at Turfway, I think, uh, ended up catching us, but uh, that's okay. Still a good week. Um, it, it was a good weekend of racing, even if a little bit chalky, I think. I, I thought that your pick at Gulfstream with simplification ran a really nice race there. I thought that was an excellent pick, and he really backed up that effort that he showed in the Holy Bulls. So I thought that was a great pick. Forbidden Kingdom, another, uh, another impressive-looking winner out west. I'm not sure what was behind him in there, but... He won about as easy as you could ever ask. And then at Aqueduct, I think uh, I ended up on the winner there with Morello and uh, another pretty dominant winner at, uh, at short odds, but looked awful good doing it. So I think uh, we had some really nice winners this week, uh, last weekend and slows down a little bit this weekend and next, I think, but then uh, we'll be in full force between now and the first Saturday in May. Yeah, I can't believe how we're coming in on those days and it's definitely going to be that last week in, in March and the first week in April is going to be quite hectic for us. Um, but we did also hit the exacta. At, at, you did have a short price, but it was your short price over my long shot. We did hit the exacta at Aqueduct as well. Um, I believe we played $17, so not a bad one for, for how short that, that went off. Um, the Baffert there was a little interesting. Um, seems like they said he came back fine out of the race, but that was not impressive to me at all at Aqueduct. That was a great look by you after uh, making a call from the previous week's uh, Baffert, how they ran, fading that Baffert there. So let's move down to Tampa. Uh, we got the Tampa Derby this week. Um, great race, $400,000, 12 runners going one and one sixteenth of a mile. Um, it should be a muddy slash drying track. Let's see how the weather, 50 points towards the starter gate of the Derby. Very excited here. We have some good horses coming back. I'll start us off with the one, Grantham. Uh, Mike Maker gets Sammy Camacho in the irons. The horse is shipping in from Aqueduct and has yet to work over the Tampa dirt. Um, horses over one of the off going, so a little bit interesting there. Um, Camacho and Maker are 25% together, so I, I do like those connections. Um, horse finish, finish finished fourth in the Withers, which, as you and I have spoken to a couple times now, is such a hard race to read coming out of. Uh, we saw Un Ojo uh, win the Rebel out of that. Uh, we haven't seen the other the winner of that race come back yet. That race was in the wet, so if this is wet, this could be a little bit interesting for this horse. This horse should be forward to the pace and inside. Uh, we'll take a look at the TTT quickly um, for Tampa. As we see, the inside is where you want to be on these dirt routes. 53% in a 7.3 field average are winning for post one through three. And it is, a, it is a more speedy stalker pace there as we have over 70% of horses winning on or within four lengths of the lead at first call. So it's definitely going to be forwardly placed. Um, this horse could, could get up there and maybe hold on for second and third. Horse I'm going to be looking at in my exactas and tries possibly. What did you think of the two and the three? Yeah, I think that's an interesting stat that you just pulled up as far as the uh, inside bias or inside uh, post positions have performed really a, a noticeable drop off when you start getting in those outside seven, eight, nine and beyond post positions. So I'm going to give an extra hard look to some of these inside runners. The number two trademark is one that is a tough horse for me to really understand. He had two really, really nice races at Churchill where he made the lead took a little bit of pressure and then dropped by daylight. And then he didn't get the lead last time when thrown into the Sam F Davis and he really just packed it in and did less than no running. I'm not sure if perhaps he just needed that start off the short layoff. Perhaps he doesn't care for Tampa or perhaps he's just not this good, but this is a horse that if you liked him last time, then I think you can maybe excuse that last race and give him one more chance in here. You're going to get probably every bit of 30 to one. And he does have inside speed, which we just saw is pretty effective at this track. So this is a horse that uh, probably won't make too many of my tickets. But if you're a fan, I think you get paid to take uh, take another chance on him. The number three, Happy Boy Rocket. So this is another horse that I find pretty interesting in here. And I think 12 to one is a pretty fair price, to be honest. He is going from maiden races straight into graded stakes. So that is a pretty substantial move up in class. However, Bill Mott is pretty good at taking these horses that go from maiden and going straight to the graded stakes ranks. He has a pretty good win strike there with a decent ROI. This horse really took a big step forward, stretching out around two turns at Gulfstream last out. He won by you know two and three quarters lengths against a fairly decent field. 
Uh, the figure came back okay. He will need to improve off of that race in order to compete here, but there's every reason to think that he should. And he's an interesting player uh, if you're looking for more of a new shooter and not trying to back someone out of that Sam F. Davis. So speaking of which, I guess that takes us to uh, to the winner of the Sam S. Davis. What would you come up with as far as Classic Causeway is concerned? I mean, this is the horse to beat, plain and simple. Uh, has done impressive things since it started. Irad crosses the state to stay on the mount. Um, Giant Causeway, baby here. We're trained by Lynch. Um, Brian Lynch is, is, I believe, right now the number one stat in the country for second off layoff. Um, he is the best in the business, I believe, right now. Um, horse has the size, the stars aligning for it here. Um, bias fits well. Horse is training exceptional in the morning. Um, this is the horse to beat. I think it's going to be very short. I think this morning line is a little bit on the generous side. Um, I think we're going to see something like a Forbidden Kingdom type of toe board when we, when we start here. Um, but see what happens. Horse hasn't really been challenged too hard on the front end. Maybe somebody sends from the inside here and gives him a little uh, little something that he, he has to fool around with. And it can become a little more difficult. But definitely the horse to beat here. I think that uh, Classic Causeway is going to be as short as it's going to come. Um, and uh, a horse I'm just not going to be playing because it's going to be too short for me. Um, brings me to the five, Giants game. Scratched out of the Fountain of Youth. Uh, Romans didn't like the post. It was outside. Moved six spots inside here. Um, horse did not impress me in the Holy Bill, uh, Holy Bull at all. I saw the horse race live. Um, I will say about this horse that it's going to be coming from pretty far back. Uh, as we just saw, the bias is more probably placed here. I think with the conditions, uh, it could possibly set up for him if it is a drying track. If we do see something more of a sloppy track, I'm going to toss this horse here because I think coming back, too much kickback, it's not going to be interested. Um, Tampa drains pretty well, but you do see that uh, it, the, the rail at Tampa definitely drains much better than the middle of the track. Um, when you, It's not one of those tracks where you see horses come flying down the middle in a muddy or, 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 or a sloppy track. It is usually one where you stick on the rail. So something just to keep an eye on. Um, the, it, the track is not traditionally crowned as much as others. Um, but those are my two right there. I'm going to take a, ask you, what do you think about this six and the seven? We're getting into some interesting horses here. Yeah, we are. And that's a great point about track condition. With the weather being a big uncertainty here, that's going to play a big factor. With the number six, Golden Glider, I thought he ran okay in the same F Davis. He had a clean trip. He sat off of a pretty quick pace. And he made an okay run. I thought others closed a little more stoutly than he did, uh, given that he sort of had a, a fine trip and just really couldn't land a blow. I guess he could improve. If the track comes up pretty wet or pretty muddy, he is bred to handle that. So maybe move him up if the track comes up off. But I thought he sort of had every chance last race and just really couldn't get it done. So I, I struggle to see him really improving off of that effort. But he could certainly run underneath and fell at the bottom of exotics. Number seven, Strike Hard. So this is a horse that I actually did back as my long shot pick in the Sam F. Davis. And I am tempted to back him again, although the price may not be quite as generous. He didn't get the right trip last time. And it's hard to really blame Luis Reyes, given that we just looked at the post position stats for Tampa Bay dirt routes. Extremely difficult to win from the far outside. He had the 10 post. He was extremely wide, five wide around the turn. And just really lost too much ground to ever really get close enough to threaten Classic Causeway in that race. There still is the question of, does he really want to go two turns? He's done his best work on one turn at Gulfstream. So I think that's fair to ask if he's just a Gulfstream specialist or just a one turn miler. But you do go from Luis Reyes to Luis Saez. So a pretty significant upgrade in the saddle. And I think with a slightly better post position today, I think he'll be able to save more ground and probably stay a little closer to the pace. So he's a horse that I would give a long look to in this race one more time. That brings us to number eight, Major General. Any thoughts there, Andrew? I had done nothing wrong. Constitution baby, baby, Todd Pleasure trained, Javier Castellano in the irons. Javier hops off the nine here to, to ride Major General. Um, been perfect so far, but been on the bench since the Churchill in the fall, won the year, Koi. I'm concerned about the 175 days loss. Um, this might be just a setup race for maybe like the Florida Derby. Um, but this is a lot of time off um, and the works have only been okay for being on the bench that long. Um, I don't even know if Todd Fletcher and, and Javier Castellano in Florida, the combo that's killed it for how many years can overcome this year. Horse is going to be short for coming off that long. I don't know if I want to be on a horse that's going to be at those odds 
with this much time off and not works that jumped off the page at me. Um, most likely this horse is going to be a toss for me. I'm interested to see here. I, I have a weird feeling this horse might scratch. Um, not that I know anything, but I do have a few weird feeling that this horse might scratch um, based on those last two works, but we'll see what happens. Moving on to the number nine, my pick from the last, Sam F. Davis, ship stational, midshipman, Edward, a uh, midshipman, uh, Eddie Baker trainee, Manny Franco picks up the mount here. Uh, JJ hopped off to go on to the eight. Manny comes down from New York to ride this horse. Um, second in the Sam F. Davis, horse showed a lot of heart sweeping the field, coming from eighth to second. Um, I think JJ sort of fell asleep in the gate. If you watch the break, the horse was not as close as it should have been. Um, and it's interesting because I've said that I think three times on our streams now that uh, JJ fell asleep in the gate. Maybe there's a pattern here. He did it with uh, simplification in the in the Holy Bull. I, I've seen this over and over again. Maybe he's not the gate the gate jockey that he was in years past. He is getting up there a little bit in age, but we'll see what happens here. I think this horse head can better use a little bit more tactical speed, get a little closer to the pace. Um, horse has been firing. Honestly, in the morning, bullet after bullet, um, amazing works, working with some pretty decent work partners, some of the best at a baker's barn. Uh, so I, 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 I'm going to take a look here at this horse very hard. Six to one seems a little bit generous on the morning line. I think it's going to be a little bit shorter, but a horse I'm definitely going to be focused on um, as we come to this coming Saturday. What did you think of the 10 and the 11? Yeah, so now we're getting to uh, some of the more outside drawn horses, which you know, I'm going to inherently downgrade a little bit. Number 10, Belgrade, he's truthfully done nothing wrong. He's won from just off the pace in both starts. He's undefeated, two out of two, uh, including a win over the local surface here at Tampa. Is trying to stretch out to two turns here for the first time while also tackling graded stakes company. Uh, was kind of life or death to get up last out in that optional claiming race. I don't know that this is a horse that I'm going to be rushing to the window to bet. I just think it's there's a lot against him here. He has a tough post to overcome. He's got to try to navigate two turns for the first time. He's going against Graded Stakes Company for the first time after really needing every inch of ground to uh, get up against those optional claiming foes last out. So I think this is a horse that is going to be up against it. He's been up against a couple small fields in those two starts and now you know is an outside post in a big field today. So I think this is a nice horse, but this, this feels like a little too much too soon for me for a horse like Belgrade. Number 11, Money Supply. This also feels like a little much too soon, but it is Chad Brown. So you do need to take that with a grain of salt here. This horse did debut at Tampa sprinting. And if you watch that race, it was a visually impressive race. This horse came out slow. He was eighth by 11 lengths at the first call. And he just absolutely shot up a hole in the stretch and never looked back. Uh, ran away from this field one by two lengths. And you don't see that very often at Tampa. You don't see these horses make these huge last to first moves all that often. I think this is an extremely talented horse, but again, I think he's going to be up against it. He's got a very tough post to navigate. He also needs to stretch out to two turns for the first time. He's tackling winners for the first time. And there's a lot kind of against him here. This is a run style that is not typically successful in these kind of races trying to pass the entire field so this is a horse that i anticipate will take some money because the speed figure came back pretty honest and you have very strong connections with chad brown and jose ortiz and claravich stables but i do think that this is a horse i'm gonna have to see prove it to me one more time before i'd be willing to bet him in a spot like this and i think that takes us to our last horse uh, why don't you talk to me a little bit about spin wheel the 12. so as we said outside is not the place to be um, one run closer, not the place to be. Um, spin wheel had both outclassed in the Holy Bull, did not move forward at all. Um, horse hasn't done anything in training since then. A one run closer that has an opportunity to pass, possibly pass some tiring horses. Um, the pace scenario here does not look like a melt to me. I, I've looked at it three or four times now. It does seem faster on the front end, but I don't necessarily see a melt. Um, they could go off and everybody could try to get the lead because they don't want kickback if it's really, really wet. And this horse has the opportunity to possibly make this big one run. Again, that doesn't happen at Tampa very often. Um, but if you're looking for a horse to possibly hedge yourself out, if you're going to be playing a lot of speed in this race, and you're looking for something to hedge yourself out and possibly come to a, some sort of uh, uh, a backup plan, this is your horse probably for that one run closer. But again, outside, one run closer in the, in the slop, 
or in the mud, uh, it's not necessarily something I'm, I'm interested to be betting. Um, and that's our field of 12. It's a great field of 12. Nice class group, classic group of horses. Tampa's big day. It should be a nice crowd there. Um, who'd you go with with your top pick, Caleb? Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to be a filthy chunk eating weasel once again. Uh, I just, I have a hard time seeing Classic Causeway losing this race. I thought his Sam F. Davis was super impressive. Coming off the short layoff, he took some pace pressure from the 13 horse, uh, Little Vic, uh, put that horse away, and then drew off to win pretty much under a hand ride. I think the pace will be probably more moderate in this race than it was in that race. He once again gets a nice cozy draw inside. He gets Irad Ortiz to stick. I just think this horse is kind of a cut above most of the other horses in this field. I do agree with you. The price is going to be very short. This is not a horse that I'm going to be interested in win betting, but I think that for looking to anchor your pick fours and pick fives, this is a horse that I think you can play with a pretty high level of confidence here. Where'd you end up, Andrew? I mean, I agree with you. I think this horse can be very tough to beat. I think we're going to see a little bit of a repeat of the Sam F. Davis, to be honest with you. Um, I agree with you on your horizontal bets. This is probably, uh, you could probably single this horse here. Um, maybe play some C tickets with a couple others. Um, but I'll be playing C tickets with a couple others. And uh, But I'm going to have an A as their as ship stational as well. Um, I love this horse last time. I've been very high on this horse. Horse stayed in Florida, continues to work each morning and just continues to improve. I think Manny will get a little more aggressive out of the gate. Keep the horse a little bit closer. Um, Classic Causeway doesn't just get away with it. I like the morning line. Um, I'll take all of it if I can get it. Horse is two for two in the off going. If we see off going, I, I like horses that are continuously doing something correctly. This horse is two for two in the off going. I'd like to see a, a little bit of a muddy slash sloppy track Saturday, and I'd be very excited to have my money on this horse um, and continues to improve. And then <clears throat> last, the, 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 stock, the stalking style of this horse uh, and where it's positioned, I think there's a really good opportunity for the horse just to sit off his shoulder and, and try to make one run. I think that uh, Classic Causeway is not going to be able to get away like he, he did last time. I think you're going to see a, one or two rabbits would be a long shot in here that's going to sort of pressure him maybe from the inside, the one or the two. Interested to see how that works. Um, but uh, definitely I'm going I'm to go with Chip Sational here and, and step away from Classic Causeway. It's just going to be too short. Um, as, for, as far as long shots, I do not have a long shot this week. Um, I think this race is a, a two horse race in my opinion, but I will have a little try here four nine over four nine over one two eleven. So not necessarily getting too much value in your top two there, but looking for the one two or the eleven to possibly put up a price for the uh, for the third place there. So I, I do not have a long shot, but that is my trifecta for this week. Uh, did you have a long shot, Caleb? Uh, I did have one I was interested in. Uh, I do respect your picks shipsational quite a bit. I was against that horse a bit in the Sam F. Davis and the horse really impressed me. I thought he ran a great race, uh, has every right to improve second off the layoff there and stepping forward. So I think that's a great pick, uh, even more so if the track comes up uh, muddy. So I completely think that's a valid way to go. And my long shot here, I'm actually uh, excited to hear was one that you included in the bottom of your try, which is the one horse Grantham. So I'll be the first to acknowledge that he might just be a better turf or synthetic horse, but I do think that this is a horse that's subtly improving and is kind of that lightly raced horse that ran a sneaky, better than it looks race last out in the withers that might be sitting on a nice effort here. I think, as you mentioned, we still don't really know how to evaluate the withers. I'm going to still move into this race thinking that was a good race. I still think that the figures probably aren't giving the Withers quite enough credit. I think early voting and Unoho uh, are both very nice horses. Now, my long shot pick last week in the um, in the Aqueduct race, unfortunately, did not quite pan out in the Gotham, but uh, he was also about 76 to 1. So, you know, that's fine. Uh, I'm not going to take that one to heart. So I'm going to give Grantham a shot here. I thought he ran a sneaky good race in the Withers. That's a race that, despite the fact that early voting wired that field, I think that was just a freak performance from early voting. The rest of that race absolutely fell apart, dominated by closers who were coming from 18, 15 lengths off the pace. I thought Grantham did a really nice job to stay on as well as he did. Uh, pretty much the best of those horses that were involved anywhere near the front half of the field, with the exception of early voting. I think we just saw how good the inside is at Tampa. So I'm going to make a little... A uh, combination play here just took the bias and you get one of the top local jocks who knows this track. I'm going to give Grantham a shot here to uh, pull off the upset. It uh, should be a pretty nice prize. 
I love to see it. I love when you got a long shot like that. And then I'm using him to try using long shot. Maybe we can make some magic here. Maybe I should be moving up in an exact as well. Um, so we, we ask you to like and subscribe. Hit those, smash that button at the bottom of the page. That way you're updated as we get into these last couple of weeks of the Road to the Derby. We'll be picking up. We'll have a lot more races as we get these last three to four weeks now. And that is your field of 12 for the Tampa Derby. $400,000 at stake. Uh, race number 11 going one and one sixteenth of a mile this Saturday, 523 p.m. Eastern time. We'll see you guys next week.